Hello, this is Paul from Passat Tech. In this video, let's prove the theorem 4.6.2, uh, which is the preliminary results for uh, the proofs of uh, theorem 4.6.1, the fundamental theorem. Okay. So these are preliminary results that if V is a finite dimension vector space, uh, suppose V1, V2 to Vn uh, is a basis. And then we have two results. The first, give you any set, if uh, the number of the vector in the set is more than the number n, and then this set should be linearly dependent. And then another result, and if a set has fewer than n vectors, then it does not expand the whole space V. Uh, let's prove <clears throat> the first. I just gave an example. Okay, so I just gave an example. Uh, but the idea is the same. You can generalize the idea. So first, uh, let's say uh, the basis, I get it small. Okay, I set up n equal to like two. I just give this. Okay, so I set up a uh, the number of vectors in the basis is only two. And then I give you any, another set, uh, so three vectors is more than two vectors, right? So now we need to see uh, this. What do we need to do? We need to prove uh, uh, this set U1, U2, U3, is linearly dependent, right? Okay, so now, uh, how to say this is linearly dependent? We use the theorem, okay? We set up a linear system to solve the coefficient. Remember that, that's the theorem 4.4.1, we just use. So we set up an equation. Uh, let's do this. We set up Okay, and then we solve the system. If we find a non-trivial solution, uh, means uh, u1, u2, u3 is linearly dependent, right? Okay, so how to solve this? We have to use the basis V. Uh, what is the definition of basis? Basis is spend the whole space, right? Therefore, u1, u2, u3, all uh, is a linear combination of V1 and V2. Okay, u1, u2, u3, uh, linear combinations of uh, the basis okay that's the basic right definitely in the future if you are familiar uh if this data is a linear combination of these two and the definitely the dimension of this or the rank of this is more than this therefore this should be linearly dependent but now we have to solve this equation uh we saw this first uh, we set up the uh basis representation or we find the representation of each u and the v1 and v2 like this okay see each one should be a linear combination of the basis and then what do we do we just pull up okay pull up this in uh, we will find a a linear system or equation for v1 and v2 and then v1 v2 is linearly independent so we can solve now if we plug in so imagine that this plug in uh we have the times k1 right and then times k2 to here and then times k3 to u3 if we combine the like term okay so therefore we can put a k1 uh, A11 times K1, A21 times K2, A31 times K3. Okay, that's uh, uh, the sum of the product that should be the linear coefficient of V1, right? The same way we can find that the linear coefficient of V2. See, if I put it in, should we get this result? Okay, so now, what do we get? So here the linear coefficient, this should be equal to zero, right? This should be equal to zero, this should be equal to zero because uh, 
v1 and the v2 is a linearly independent that's a basis okay so what do we get see we get a linear system this is a linear system okay how about this system and the, all the coefficient a is unique right it exists okay and then uh, we need to solve for k1 k2 k3 see how many equations are two how many variables we have three we learned this before right so here is uh, uh three variables but only two equations a infinitely many solution right so therefore we get um non-trivial solution exists therefore now trivial solution Okay, it exists. And uh, remember this. Uh, when we set up equation, when we solve the equation, if we find a non-trivial solution to this system, it means u1, u2, u3 are linearly dependent, right? Okay. So therefore, linearly dependent. Okay, that's the theorem. 4.4.1. That's approved for the first part. Now, I look at the second part. The second part B says if a set has fewer than uh, the vector in the basis, and uh, then this set cannot span the whole space. Okay, so that's true. I also just give a small example. So the idea is the same, you can extend. Um, let's set up a, the basis is a, has a three vectors, okay? And uh, give another set as only two, fewer than the numbers in the basis. Okay, so this is the setting up. So now what do we need to do? So we need to prove um, the set cannot span, right? Which means that the span of uh, V is the whole space. We need to prove the span of U1, U2 is uh, not at the whole space. That's the without say why. Uh, we can use the proof by contradiction, okay? And the combine another theorem we learned before. Uh, if the span equals uh, V, we will get a contradiction. What is V? Okay, I can write that the V is just a span of a basis, a uh, basis which is a V1, V2, and V3 that we set up. Okay, so now the span of U1, U2, you got the span of V1, V2, and V3. Remember? Uh, then we have this result. By the theorem, we learned up a four, four point three point two. We have what? Um, v one, v two, v three should be linear combination of u, and the u also linear combination of v. Why you use one part? Then v one, v two, v three. Okay, so let me say. This. Any vector inside is a linear combination of u1, uh, u2. Okay, and uh, we just approved it in the first part. Imagine if this is a linear combination of this part. Okay, the same way as we proved it in A. See here. Uh, a set is a linear combination of this, therefore this should be linearly dependent, definitely, linearly dependent, the same way as we proved it in A. So, should be linearly dependent. Okay, so here is just a similar as A.
uh, the, the strategy we use the A. Well, what does this mean? Uh, V1, V2, V3 is linearly dependent. That's impossible, right? Because V1, V2, V3, see, we set up as a basis. A basis cannot, uh, cannot be linearly independent. So this is contradict, right? So what does it mean? Uh, it means uh, here, the span uh, equals is uh, round. So therefore, the span of U1, U2 should be uh, not equals the whole space. Therefore, we get, and uh, that's the proof. Thank you.